All right, guys, happy Monday. Thanks for showing up today. Today is our level up coaching session. Um, super pumped about this one because we got two guests on here, our own uh, top producers here in the office, Hervin Montano and Blanca Medellin. Just give it up for taking their time out of their day, guys, to jump on here with you guys and help uh, coach you guys and train you guys. Um, you're definitely gonna wanna take some notes today because these two individuals are doing this stuff at a high level. Um, Herman put, I don't know, 15 to 20 clients in contract in the last you know, three to six months. Uh, Blanca's probably done hundreds and hundreds of sales in her career. Um, you know, just to, I don't wanna go over their whole resume, but these guys have a lot of experience, guys. These guys are doing this at a, at a high level. So there's certain things that they are doing um, to win in this market, right? The market's challenging and there's certain things that they're doing to stay organized, to be efficient. Uh, there's best practices that they've probably learned and systems they implement in their day um, to make them successful. So today is gonna be all about offer preparation. And what I really wanna talk about today, guys, is not, we're not gonna show you like how to read the contract. That's not like, you gotta spend some time. So I wanna preface this training with, you got to take the time to uh, watch the trainings on how to understand and read the contract. Um, there's a whole training that Carr did. It's probably like several hours long. Um, but the best thing to do, guys, is just pull up a blank contract and read through it line by line so that you get familiar with the different parts of it. So that's not what this training is about. It's not about understanding what the contract is. You got to do that stuff on your own time. What this training is about is what are these guys doing to prepare to write an offer so there's stuff that they do when they when they prepare you know to to write an offer with the client there are things that they are doing uh when they're actually writing the offer maybe there's some best best practices that they're doing to either save time or make sure their offer is complete and things of that sort and then there are certain things that they are doing to uh, submit the offer and get it submitted over to the agent so that's really what i want to focus on i want to spend some time on the before the during and then the after, once you're presenting it to the client. And uh, for Blanca and Hervin, uh, there's probably a lot of things that you guys do that are similar. And then there's gonna be some things that you guys do that are specific to you guys that you guys have just found that works for you. So to make this productive, let's not repeat each other. Like if there's something that Hervin says that you already do Blanca, just, you know, you don't have to mention that again, vice versa, Hervin. More point out the stuff that maybe you do that's maybe a little bit different or in addition that you find as a, as a value add just so we uh, get the keep the flow going and and because there will be some fundamental things that both of you guys do that are the same. So let's start off by prep, guys. What are you guys doing before you even write an offer? Right? We're assuming you've showed a home, you know, you met the client, they picked out the property. What are you guys doing to prepare to write that offer? Right? What goes happens before you even open up wind forms and start writing the offer. Let's go Blanca and then we'll go Herbin. Okay, hi guys. Yeah, so um, whenever I show a property, I already looked at all the information on the MLS. Um, I already saw if there's an offer due date. I already saw how the offer should be submitted or if it's offers as they come in. And then we book the showing with the client. When I book the showing with the client at that time, I bring with me comps. So I'm already talking with my client at the property and we're talking about the comps in the area. What's active, pending and sold. Um, and then I'm giving them feedback. Hey, this one has an offer due date or this one does not have an offer due date. Um, what's the benefit of writing before an offer due date if there's no offer due date and just getting your foot in the door? Um, and if there is an offer due date being ready. So after that uh, viewing with the client and reviewing the comps, if it's a property that they like and they wanna move forward, I immediately set up the offer review. Um, at that time, later that evening, we're going over the disclosures, the reports, the inspections in thorough, uh, therefore to help us prepare a strong offer. If the property is in good condition with mi minimal work, 
um, and they're fully informed and all the documents are presented from seller disclosures to all the disclosure to all the inspections, then we're waiving that property contingency. And I'm only advising that to the client if it's a complete disclosure. Um, and then we're talking about the finance. We're talking about if we're going to need a finance contingency and appraisal contingency. So we're really positioning the buyer in a winning position and a strong position if we need to. If there's no offers or if there's some wiggle room or if the property needs some work, then I already connected with the listing agent and got that information as well. It's very important that right after you show the property, if your client loves it, I call from my car and I say, hey, we just toured your listing, beautiful property. Can I talk to you a little bit more about getting ready to submit an offer? So at that time, I already know the seller expectation. So when we're reviewing the offer and going through the disclosures, I already am giving them feedback that I already connected with the listing agent. And this is a feedback I got. So right. that's, that's how I am preparing to get ready to submit an offer. Got it. So what I'm hearing is, um, just to reiterate, guys, because I know it's a lot of information, and you, and you guys should definitely be taking notes. Um, you've showed the property. You've already identified which property they want to make an offer on. Immediately after showing, you're already starting the work, right? Yeah. On the way home. Uh, you're already calling the listing agent. You're already you're already making the calls and already trying to get a sense of where it stands, what the expectations are. Uh, and I think that's a good point that you point out, right? We're not waiting till like hours later. There's like a sense of urgency, right? The client wants the property. Let's already start doing some homework and trying to set up the next step, right? To go over disclosures and get ready to submit our offer. Right. Uh, Awesome. And you guys feel free to put any questions in the chat. So just throughout this, if you have any questions that pop up, put it in the chat and then we'll, we'll address them as they go. Um, Herbin, give me some feedback, brother. What, is there anything in addition or different that you are doing uh, or any, any points that you want to point out in that initial process? Um, a lot of the similar, similar things. Yeah. So um just like Blanca said, go on as you're as you're selecting those homes, you're getting your tour ready. Um, I would say, like in addition to kind of prep my myself um, for a potential offer on a property, um, I'll I'll start calling the listing agents before I show, um, just to kind of introduce myself. Like, hey, Blanca, this is Irvin. How you been? Oh, good. Hey, um, I see that, you know, so-and-so property has been on the market for X amount of days, which most homes have been on the market, seven, 10 plus days, right? Most. I'll just say, what's the feedback been? And then I just, you know, try to connect with them. Um, I don't ask them about price. Like I don't ask them about anything on the first call. You know, I tell them we haven't seen the property yet, but I hope it's a good match for my client. And then I send them my contact information and I, and I save their contact information on my phone. Um, the reason I do that is because a lot of listing agents today follow up. So they're actually calling us back. So then after I show the homes, I do get a call, but I already have the uh, listing agent's phone number saved on my phone. So now instead of saying, this is Irvin, when I pick up the call, I'm like, hey, Blanca. They're like, oh, shoot, like, <laughs> this guy has my number already. So that gets them just as excited as me to want to work with me. And then that's how I get the wall down to then ask about the price. Mm. Um, so it's like a process, A process and then B process, right? And then everything else in between is exactly what Blanca does, which is the important stuff too. Disclosures, stuff like that, and seeing what's the best possible offer to make. Awesome. Uh, that's an awesome, I just, I, that's a, that's a great tip that I just picked up right now, what you just said of saving their info, because I think what you'll know about Blanc and Hervin is that when they go show properties, they already know their clients, right? They've already built enough rapport with their clients and know their criteria. So they're going to already know if the property that they're going to show is probably something they would be interested in. Right. Um, because number one, they're probably, they're probably not showing them properties in the first place that the client wouldn't be interested in, right? They're probably already pre-screening them for them. 
So they're already kind of building their list. And I like what you pointed out, Hervin, of saving the client, the agent's contact info, because we got to remember, guys, that Hervin's doing two things. He's impressing the agent, right? When the, the agent calls back, he already knows his name, but he's also building a relationship with that agent that could be a long-term relationship, right? Because let's say on a different property it, or a different client or whatever it might be, if he already has a dialogue with that agent, that relationship is going to come in handy, right? So I like that because you're building something like down the line that not only serves your existing client, but it's going to serve your business in the future. Um, go ahead, Blanca. Yeah, I just want to touch on that, what you're saying, because that exactly happened to me on Friday. I was out showing property in Los Altos and the listing agent was an agent that I worked before right at the beginning of COVID. And we built a really good relationship and the transaction went really well. So as soon as I pulled up, um, I texted him, I'm showing your listing on Los Altos. I hope my clients fall in love with it. So he says, he right away responded, I hope so too. Call me when you leave. So as soon as I left, um, we were chit-chatting and he says, what did they think, et cetera. So he basically told me right when they got an offer where we needed to be. Unfortunately, my clients were discouraged because of a, a electricity tower that was a few houses down. And, you know, because of what you hear health wise, it's nothing proven, but they just have that in their mind. So that was the only drawback, but touching on what Enrique is saying, that will come in very handy because he basically told me if you want, if they like it, they want to move forward. You would just need to be here and we can secure this and move on. I would love to work with you again. So it really helps to build those good relationships and, you know, for future business with different clients. Awesome. That's awesome. Awesome. And that's a real life example right there of, of how that came in handy. Had your clients liked the property or didn't have that tower, boom, that would have been a, a secure deal right there. Yeah. She already knows the agent. She already built a rapport. She already pro proved herself by working with them on another transaction. Mm -hmm. And he already said, hey, this is where you need to be at. Right. So yeah. how much easier does that make it for you to get your clients in contract? Yeah. And also how much more value are you bringing to the table for your client when you're able mm -hmm. to, when you're able to tell them this in the presentation, like, Hey, the reason you want to work with me is because I have built so many relationships throughout the Bay area in my career that I have an unfair disadvantage over other agents, right? Like I have the secret, the secret sauce to get your foot in the door over these other agents who aren't actively building relationships. And, and this was a Zillow, Zillow Connect client guys that came in. Um, and I, exactly what you're saying is what I told them. Hey, I just worked with this agent, you know, not too long ago. So I'm sure I'll be able to get all the insight. And when I was texting them, giving them all the information we, he was sharing, I think that was pretty impressive for them. So it built what's my the, credibility. What's the price point on that one? 3.2 to 3.5. Let's go, there you go. Yeah. Right. So especially in those price ranges and the higher price ranges, relationships are even more key. Um, mm -hmm. How important, guys, is it to know what your client is looking for and pre-screen properties and know which ones to show them and not to show them and be able to communicate that to the clients? Um, Herb or Blanca? I would say is, uh, well, it's very important, right? But it's, if you're going off to the second weekend, it's even more important, right? Because the first time it's like, that's when you're really trying to get the feel, right? I think one, one mistake that I was doing, um, and I wasn't aware that I was doing, making this mistake as, you know, before, is that at the end of the day, when you're done viewing, you know, four or five, six properties, I wasn't asking for feedback, like in between. Like I was waiting to, till the end to ask for feedback about the homes. And you need to ask in the middle or even like, or if you have like eight homes, ask like three different times during these tours because it's very easy for everybody to kind of like mash the homes together and then the feedback gets all watered down. So Deliri pointed that out when she started tagging along with my showings. And she's like, you're not asking for any feedback. We've already seen like three or four homes. I was like, oh, shoot, I don't even remember like the three or four homes, like, you know, so start asking for feedback. And then the more you do that, 
the, the faster you'll get to that first offer if it's not that first weekend. And then going on to a second weekend and third weekend, you better know what your clients are looking for because they could also get really annoyed. So um, I would say it's really important. And how do you have that conversation? Like, let's maybe role play real quick. I send you, I'm your client. I send you a property. It clearly is not a property that I'm, I'm not going to like. I'm not going to like, right? Because you already know the area or you already know it has this. How, just give me a quick role play. Like, what would you say to them or how do you approach that? Hey, Enrique, um, that home is not too bad, but it's actually very similar to the home we saw last week, went to three Main Street. Um, you know, what, what did you think of that home? Yeah, I didn't really like that one on 123 Main Street. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I got the same feeling from you. Uh, so I'll leave it up to you, but I recommend we pass on this one. I'm um, seeing how uh, similar those two homes were. Got it. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. The other one had a small backyard, and yeah, I think you're right. This one does kind of have a small yard. Mm -hmm. So I'll try to compare it like that. Um, but yeah, I'm more, I'm just more direct now but yeah um, Me too. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah but it, and it's you know like Blanca and I like we'll try to build that relationship too with the client as we you know we become friends with our clients yeah so it also makes it a little, a little a little easier to be that direct yeah and I think that's important right what you just said right there you've built the relationship and rapport enough so that there's confidence between the client and you, right? You guys have that, that level of confidence to communicate openly with each other, right? It doesn't just happen on the first showing. Ah, you're not gonna like this one. It's like, well, you haven't got there yet. You haven't built the relationship and you haven't earned the right to just go ahead and tell them up front, right? You have to kind of work your way in. And then at that, after you've shown several properties, they see how you are and you've built relationship, then they're comfortable with taking the feedback from you, right? Is there anything else, Blanca, that you might, how you might approach that? Yeah, no, I totally agree with what you guys are saying because I the feedback I can give you is don't be afraid to share when you feel that they're not going to like a property based on what you've already seen and the feedback they've given you. I'm still a little old school. I'll bring out printouts, the client profile on the property, and I bring it in a folder. I'll just hand it to them if we're going to see three or more properties. And I tell them, do me a favor, just take a few minutes when you get in your car and write down what you loved about this home and what you hated about this home. That way they're like physically writing stuff and they have something in their hand. For me, I feel like it helps them also really point out what they like on the property. And then I'll, I'll ask them. So what did you guys think of this one compared to the other one? I'm kind of checking in, but another thing, and it falls to what Irvin said is, if they send you a property and you saw a property where the lot is small and there's no room for growth and they send you another one, don't be afraid to let them know so that also you're not spinning your wheels and you're not driving all over the place. If you're going to go see six properties, just say, hey, I wanted to bring out this one has a really small lot. The square footage of living space is not that big. This is as big as you're going to be for the rest of the house life. Is this something you guys still wanna see? Oh, you're right, Blanca, no, let's eliminate that one. Or, you know, and they're also appreciating that you're looking out for their best interest in a future, in a resale value way or growth wise where they can no longer grow into a bigger property. This is the max size. So yeah. you're showing them that you really care and you're paying attention on things that they didn't like on other showings. Yeah. Yeah, but like thing. I said, Go ahead. yeah, for me, I'm still very um, back to basics where I'll hand them things and I'll have them just take a few minutes and write stuff. And all the clients that I do that with, it's pretty much every client. And they tell me, I'm glad that you gave us this because now we can talk about it and we'll let you know. And we're going to like compare our notes and, you know, just share what we really liked and which one we didn't like. So it helps. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's the difference, guys, between between just being a salesperson and being an, an actual advisor or a consultant, right? Where you're consulting them on, hey, I know you like this property, but I just want to, you know, let you know for future value. You know, I don't know if this is going to be the best one, or I just got to point this out. I want to make sure you're informed, right? And then the clients really appreciate that. And then the other thing to, to point out to you guys is that Blanca's more old school, right? So she prints out the listings and writes on them. And I've seen her, she has all these, print, they're all printed out. She staples them and hands them to the client, which is great, right? That works. Hervin is more new school where I know he has this whole Google doc thing and the clients enter feedback in the Google doc and all that stuff. So 
there's two different ways. They're both successful and they both work. It does the same exact thing. It's just a matter of what works for you and then also what works for your client, right? So you also gotta, you gotta recognize what your client is. Let's say you have a really older couple, right? The Google doc, they may not know how to use that thing. Vice versa, you may have a real tech savvy person that wants everything done through email and wants to be able to access it through an app on their phone and Blanca's handing them you know, the black and white coffee, right? So it, it really, you gotta figure out your client as well. And then, but those two things, those are just little systems that they've built within their business to get instant feedback and show value to their client. Awesome stuff, guys. All right, um, so I want you guys to understand that writing a great offer starts with how you prepare to write the great offer, right? Because we're spending time on this stuff because all of this stuff leads up to, okay, Blanca, okay, Hervin, this is the home I wanna write the offer on. All right, so let's go now into step two of you're actually writing the offer, right? You've talked to the agent. Um, maybe we can take it there. Hey, you're gonna write the offer, so now you're serious, right? Now you're gonna maybe call the agent again. What are you saying to gauge price? Um, is there anything you're actually doing to make it more efficient now that you're actually writing the offer. Like, like sending it out? Like, like no, like, you're gonna, you're gonna go in win forms and write it, right? And like, let's say, uh, are you having a conversation about the price at that point with the listing agent, right? Cause you built rapport. You said that was like step one, right? Now you're actually, you know, you're gonna write the offer. What's the conversation to try to gauge where you need to be at? Oh, um, well, I call, like, let's say, uh, hey, Blanca, I have some good news for you. And like, okay. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, What's up? What's up, Irvin? <laughs> Are you writing me an offer? Yes, I'm writing it up. I'm just doing a little bit of research. I'm running my comps right now. Um, I have a general idea of where I need to land at. Um, I just wanted to pick your brain a little bit. Um, tell me a little bit more about the types of offers you've been getting. Okay, yeah, sure. Um, actually, Irvin, we've gotten about 30 disclosure downloads. I have two agents saying that they're going to submit an offer and basically kind of doing what you're doing is gathering the information. And uh, I don't have anything on hand yet. But I do want to share that my seller is looking for a clean, straightforward, uh, quick close and ready to go offer. Awesome, awesome. No, that sounds really good. And uh, I'll definitely put something on hand. As soon as possible, I know that's all that really matters. I list properties too, and there's always those agents, right? They circle around and takes uh, weeks to uh, make an offer. So awesome, awesome. So so far, nothing. Um, I will admit, Blanca, uh, your listing is at the very top of my buyer's uh, price range. Um, is your initial feeling that there may be some wiggle room here, or uh, you know, what are you thinking? Actually, we, I feel we priced very aggressively. There are higher comps in the neighborhood. So um, I think we're priced very well. So under the highest comp value and our home is very upgraded and turnkey. So I'm expecting pretty aggressive offers. Got it, got it. Yeah, that was my, um, that was my feeling too. And then um, uh, that's another thing that I wanted to pick your brain on. So even if we were to offer, you know, um, one to five percent above asking you don't feel like we'd have any appraisal issues uh no i don't feel we would have appraisal issues um i can share the comps that i have with you if you would like but if you just do uh i did a half a mile radius so we should be good awesome awesome and uh i also noticed that the property was uh owner occupied and uh, blanc i definitely appreciate you sending me those comps i'll share it with my clients as well um they really do love the property um, I see that, but I do see that your clients still live in the property. Do they need any special terms like a rent back or anything like that? Anything we could do to help? Not at this time. They're partially out. So they're pretty much moved out. The home is partially staged. So no rent back is needed. Um, they're more concerned on aggressive terms and a, a good closing, short closing. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, um, you know what? That's all I needed. Let me take a look at those comps. I'll compare them to mine. and I'm, I'm sure they're going to be very similar. And um, let's keep in touch. I'll send you my contact info if you don't um, have it saved already. I'll uh, let you know as soon as my offer is submitted. And then let's reconnect and see, uh, see what you think. Sure. Sounds great. I look forward to your offer. Awesome. And I look forward to working with you, Blanca. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Bye -bye. All right. Awesome. Awesome, guys. Awesome role play there. 
Uh, what I hear is like being super cool. He's asking questions, but he's asking them in a way where it doesn't make Blanca feel pressured or anything, right? Like you guys, you guys hear his tone, right? How he's asking the questions, right? It's, it's more like, hey, this is what I think. You know, what do you think, right? And I like that because it, it starts, it creates that uh, sense where, hey, we're in this together. We're trying to work together to try to get to the goal, right? It isn't like, hey, I'm over here and I'm going to win and you're going to win. You know, it's a bad, it's not a battle, right? It becomes more like, hey, this is what I was thinking. What were you thinking? Is there anything you can tell me, right? I want to make sure it's a good offer. Um, and those are the type of agents that you want to work with, you know, coming from experience of listing a lot of properties, guys, those type of agents like that who make my job easy and who ask questions and are thorough, like I want to work with those type of agents all day, right? Because I'm like, if this is how he's acting right now, he's letting me know what it's going to be like to work with him throughout the process, right? Yeah. And I can, and you can kind of see the patterns because he's already called me before. He's already saved my number. He's followed up with me again. He's given me feedback. So I'm already seeing throughout the process what it's like to work with Hervin, right? Um, awesome. Um, okay, Hervin. Enrique, really quick. I, yeah. I think it's important, guys, to really, really focus on those small things that, that Hervin and Blanca are doing. Because when it comes down to it, if you have, if, if the listing agent has two offers and the price is very similar, but they've had a good experience from the start with, you know, with Hervin, they're going to give you that little insight so that you can make your offer work, right? So I really want us to understand that it does take all that to save their number, to go ahead and respond and ask those questions. Because I've been with Enrique when we were listing property and we would just get people to send the offer in and you would never even hear, hear from them. Right. So I, I really want us to really, uh, you know, understand that that is important and it does take all that to be, ha to have success. Right. Oh, and one thing too, um, I'm not sure if like you caught it, but I know Blanca reacted really well to the question is um, when I said, um, tell me a little bit about the offers you've been receiving. Right. So I'm um, like some agents, depending on where the, how far along the homes have been on the market, right? So it's been it's been on the market for two weeks, um, which is average. They'll say, uh, oh yeah, I don't know, nothing on hand yet. But I have people circling. I'm like, I'm sure you do, right? But you have yourself, you know, I kind of reassured her that like, you're gonna have an offer like by today, or at least that's what I try to do, right? It's coming, it's for sure. Um, other agents too, like when you ask it that way, like, tell me a little bit more about the other offers, right? Some agents probably did have offers in the past, right? So I need to know what the sellers have shot down already and why, right? So that information too is really valuable when I take it back to my, to my buyers. Um, so that, that's why I ask it that way. Yeah. So, so, I, I know, so that way I know what not to offer. Got it. My follow-up question, Hervin, is, is in that scenario where Blanca told you she had 30 disclosure downloads, she had two supposed offers coming in, how do you take that now? Do you think like, oh, shoot, do I got to come over asking? Do I got to come at asking? Do I got to hurry up? Do you take it with a grain of salt or what's, what's your feedback on that? Mm, I always take it with a grain of salt. Um, and I know just from like, you know, talking to Blanca and talking to Rob, there's always agents circling and talking sometimes the agents are more motivated than their buyers yes. right <laughs> happy you know they want to offer but the buyers like right so i'll assume that maybe one other one will come but i don't i don't usually well how do i put this like i'll give that information to my buyer i'll tell them like hey look this is the feedback that we got there's other two potential buyers circling this this thing just so you so so we may have some competition. Sometimes that helps them move a little forward with being a little bit more aggressive with their offer. I'm not telling them to come in like an extra 50, 70K over ask because we have to. I want them to reach that conclusion for themselves. Right. right? Got it. So it's, it, it, and, um, and like I said, um, you know, oh, you know, I'll try, maybe, maybe one thing. See, because she didn't have any offers in hand, I couldn't ask if there were contingent offers or anything like that, right? So in this situation, I would just tell my buyers, like, here are the numbers, right? 
um, I agree with this data. I don't agree with this data. She's using really old comps or she's using really current comps. This, this makes sense. Um, we could expect some competition. So this is what I think. And then um, let me know what you think. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, how I, that's how I play it uh, with, with confidence, I would say. Yeah. Got it. Now, Blanca, a question for you. That, that's really good stuff, man, because you're you gauge that she doesn't have any offers in hand, but you got to assume that there may be some competition, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, what if she would have told you that she had four offers in hand and they're above asking, right? Like, cause this was common practice yeah. you know, six months, a year ago. No, I got four offers. I'm expecting five more, right? Like how would that conversation change with your client? Wow, Blanca, that's amazing. And this <laughs> four offers? Man, Blanca, any reason why you haven't taken one yet? You know, we just got them in and so we're really reviewing everything. So we may, the, I'm waiting for my seller to decide if they're going to go with the highest and best or we're going to counter the top three. Well, wow. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Blanca. That's really impressive. I have a few listings right now that are sitting. So uh, tell me a little bit more about your favorite offer. Well, you know, um, we do have a very strong offer with zero contingencies um, and a short close. They're doing a 20 day close of escrow. So it's pretty aggressive. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So um, again, Blanca, let, let me see what I can do and I'll be completely transparent with you. Um, I see that your listing is listed at red right under uh, 2 million. It sounds like where you are going to have to put a best foot forward, but we are tapped out at 2.1. Is that going to be good enough? Not at this point, Irvin. If you would want to be considered, you would have to come a little higher than that. Uh, how much higher would you say? Um, I wouldn't be able to disclose that, but uh, you would have to be above 2.1. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, no, I definitely appreciate that. And I would expect the same, you know, respect on my end. So yeah. um, let me talk to my clients. Let me see if that's in the stars for them. And then, um, you know, hopefully we can make something work for you guys. Sounds great. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I love that. So you see, you guys see how it switched, right? Like now he started digging in on what the offers were, but I love the way he asked the questions. Cause it's, it's like Blanc. It's, he's not like being rude about it. He's so no. smooth with how he asks, right? Smooth yet confident, right? What do you, what do you, what's your feedback Blanca? No, I like that. Um, the only the only suggestion I would give is once um, the agent tells you you need to be above the 2.1, um, I try to dig in a little bit more, but not being invasive. And I'd say, hey, if my client came in at 2.150, would we be in the running? Or would we still be uh, lower than your highest offer? Mm -hmm. You're not asking for the exact price or you're you're just asking, would we be in the running? Would we be in a strong position? Or Blanca, oh, yeah, you would. First, second, or third place. Yeah. Would okay. we be at the top, at the bottom, or in the middle? You know, you're trying to gauge. They're already telling you you need to be above 2.1. So why not just say, hey, if we came in at 2.150, would we be in the running? Would we secure it? I want to yeah. get this done. Okay. Yeah, you'd have a good chance. Or no, you're still in, you know, a little lower. You know, agents will give you some info, especially yeah. nowadays with the market shifting a bit. Um, they'll let you know where you need to be. Because think about it from the listing agent's perspective, right? They want to get the most for their client. So if you're throwing numbers out that are like going to help push the offer up, they're going to want to play the game too. But it's all about how you approach it. It's making sure you're yeah. keeping it cool with them. And if you guys listen in both instances right there, Blanca's tip and Hervin's, they both weren't afraid to ask, mm -hmm. right? That's what I want to point out. They weren't afraid to ask because they were already talking. They built up the dialogue. So when it got time to ask for that, they weren't just coming out of left field. It wasn't like, hey, Herman, uh, this is Enrique. I'm interested in submitting an offer. Where do I got to be at? Right? Like, no, he already like smoothed her over, talked her over, right? Went through the whole dialogue, you know, gave her some props. Oh, that's impressive. Oh, it's a nice listing. Let me tell you about my clients. So by the time he got to that question, the guard was already dropped. Right. And like he said, when she said 2.1, you know, how much over, right? He wasn't afraid to go a step ahead and say, how much over? And then Blanca wasn't even afraid to say, hey, if we came in at this, you know, would we be in the top three or what position will we stand in? And I think that is crucial right there, guys, because sometimes we may be off by 10, 20, 30 grand, 
And on a 2.1 deal, that's not a lot of money, right? Okay. It's a small percentage. And if you don't ask, you don't receive, right? But you got to ask it in a tactful way so that you get the answers, right? Yeah. Um, awesome. Okay. Um, so we prepped, we talked to the agent, we write the offer now, right? 2.15 or whatever you guys decide to come in at, right? You looked at the comps, you send the offer in. What happens next now that we're sending the offer in? How are you going about sending it? Is it via email? Are you doing anything else? Are you using your the templates, right? I want to give you guys some some pointers. Um, yeah. Uh, are you following up? Well, you know, yeah. Blanca, walk me through your process when you're sending. Yeah. Out. So, so when I send out the offer, I'm including a complete package. I'm including a cover sheet, making it easy for the listing agent on the terms to know what the overview of the offer is. I'm including, if it's owner occupied, I always advise my clients to do a short little bio with information on them and who they are, what they loved about the property. Unless in the instructions, it says no personal letters, then don't send it. Make sure you're following the instructions that are on the MLS or disclosure IO. If it's already telling you don't send personal letters, don't send personal letters because guess what? The agent's going to look at it and just say, this stupid agent didn't even read the instructions. I said no personal letters. Why would they send a personal letter? So, um, you know, plan accordingly. The next thing is the pre-approval, your lender pre-approval. You want to make sure you have that in. The next thing I include is the proof of funds. You're letting them know that the buyer's funds are readily available and ready to close. If you're removing any contingencies, include that contingency removal of what you're removing, whether it be all, whether it be one, just send it. So they already know that you're already removing some of the contingencies or all of the contingencies. And that's the order that I place it in. And then lastly, I include the offer. The last thing showing is the offer. I'm giving them all of the paperwork leading to the offer. And then at the end, I include the offer. On Disclosure IO, it says submit through Disclosure IO. I always do it through there. And I also email it to the agent. I do it in both areas. Um, and I just did that with one of the buyers that I got in contract. And then I texted the agent. Hey, I'm Haley. It's Blanca. I just want to let you know, I uploaded my client's offer on Disclosure IO, but I also uploaded it to your email just in case. Please confirm that you received it. Let me know if you have any questions. And she responded right away. She goes, thank you so much for including it in my email. I just saw it on my phone. It's like instant. It goes in. Disclosure IO sends you a message too, but it's just a little more loops that you go into to access to see it. So um, always follow up. Don't just send it and forget about it. Send it to the places you need to send it and then call or text the agent. If you know they respond better by texting because you've called a couple of times and they don't answer, then just send a text. Hey, just want to give you a heads up. I just sent your my offer in. Please let me know or confirm you received it. And usually agents respond or, or give you a, a, a response that they received it or call them. Hey, I just sent you our, my offer. I just want to make sure you did receive it. So, oh. and make sure you have a complete package. Do not miss anything. Whether you're working with an Alliance lender, you CC the lender, always include the lender in your offer. Um, I'm working with an outside lender for one of my buyers. And I called the lenders, same expectation that I have for our Alliance um, lending lenders or in-house lender, I called the agent and I said, hey, I'm going to send an offer. I'm going to include you. As soon as you get it in your inbox, can you please reach out to the listing agent? Absolutely. No one ever says no. Why? Because they also want to get the deal done. They also want to, you know, put their best foot forward for the client. So the same expectation that you have for you, have it for the lender because they're the heart. They're the ones with the money. Without the money, it's not going to happen. So make sure they're in tune, they're in the loop, and they know that you sent an offer. Don't keep them in the dark. Awesome stuff. Awesome. A yeah. lot of nuggets right there, guys. Um, Hervin, anything else you can add? Anything you do differently or? Yeah, um, I do the same thing. Um, include I CC the lender, whoever the lender is, on that email. Uh, one thing that I've started doing too is um, I don't call the listing agent like right away. Like, right, you got to let them, you know, give them enough time, right, to like receive the, you know, offer and like kind of briefly look through it. 
but what I do um, is I start a group chat um, with myself and the lender as soon as I, myself, the lender and the listing agent, as soon as I send the offer to set expectation, the communication is gonna be prime. Um, even if my offer doesn't get accepted, you're gonna have a group chat with my lender, like, just to show you how we work. Another little thing that's kind of helped me a little bit um, is we use that template. Um, let's see if I could share my screen. So we use that template to submit our offer, right? Sorry, it's like super messy, right? Like the whole thing, right? I think we all yeah. use this one. Yeah. One thing that I've added um, to it is this. So if um, offer is accepted, include my TC and my admin team. So it's like, oh, like this guy, I'm not gonna have to chase him down for like disclosures and all that stuff. He has a whole team behind him too. Mm. So I've added that portion to um, the offer. offer just to kind of get that ball rolling, uh, ball rolling faster. Um, and then, yeah, after like 10, 15 minutes, I'll give them a call, see what their initial feeling is um, on the offer. And then that's when I poke a little more where if, if I am going in a, in a, into a competitive scenario, I want to try to read their reaction to my price and my offering my terms. And then um, trying to see if we can end up on top if we're not already there. But yeah, those two, those two little things that I you know, added to my offers. It's been helping. Awesome, man. Um, Jessica, you asked if that's a canned response. Uh, let me check if it's in FirePoint. I know when we send our offers, we usually send them from our own email. So a lot of us, we have that template saved in our email as a, as a template in the, uh, the canned responses there because you can do it as well in your, in your Gmail. Mm -hmm. Irvin, can you send me, can you forward me a copy of that email with the stuff that you added to the bottom? Because mm -hmm. I think that's an awesome addition to just to uh, improve ours. And then what I'll do is I'll make sure it's in a canned response in FirePoint. Um, this way you could easily access it, copy and paste it. But I would definitely save this as a canned response in your Gmail. Um, and uh, we can do a whole nother training on how to create those. But um, so I like what I, what I'm hearing guys from both of you guys that's consistent, right? Is making sure you have a full package, right? Uh, making sure there's communication between the lender, you know, and the, the agent who submitted the offer and the listing agent, right? Make, making sure that communication is really tight. That's extremely important, guys. I want to reiterate that. Sometimes you have control over who your lender is because it's in-house. So you have, you can set expectations. But if you don't have control over who the lender is because it's an outside lender, it's important that you call that lender ahead of time and already start game planning with that, that lender. Already set the expectations of how you work because sometimes it could be like some online lender or like an, a lender who is like in a different state or they're in a different area or you only have their bank phone number and you don't have their cell phone number and you're trying to submit an offer and you've never talked to that lender, right? So it starts with the preparation, right? And I think that's one thing we, we miss because a lot of our deals, we do have the in-house lender, but there's going to be a good percentage of them where they're using Chase or they're using someone else or they're using a, a different mortgage company. So we have to be on the same page where, hey, I need you to call the listing agent. I need you to respond in the email or respond in the group chat on my text thread um, and back me up on how good of a client, how good of an offer and all this stuff is, right? Because that little thing right there, it shows that listing agent that you are prepared and that you are a team and that you work more efficiently than just some random, some random person. Um, I can tell you right now, when I was listing a lot of properties, I would always pick obviously the best offer, right? That was what we would go for. Um, but we would always go with the, the agent who was the most competent and seen that they had all their shit together. It's just bottom line. Like, like Jason was telling you, I would get offers. I'd get 10, 20 offers on properties and I'd have some where they just submit the offer. They never called me beforehand, afterhand. They didn't even check if I got their offer. And then th three days later, I would get like a text. Hey, uh, did you get my offer? Like three days later, right? Or I'd, ca I'd call them. Hey, you submitted an offer. I don't never talk to you. Oh yeah, we just wanted to see if we had a chance. We submitted an offer on another property too. Like it was just, just complete unprofessionalism. 
So it goes back to, to like, you need to make a statement to these listing agents of this is how it's going to be when you work with me from how organized your email is when you send the offer to sending the call, calling them, texting them, uh, uploading to disclosures IO and sending the email that just shows the agent that you're on it. Right. That shows the agent like, Hey, I double check my work. Um, and also following the instructions on the MLS is extremely important. If you want to know one way to piss off a listing agent is do something opposite of what they told you to do in the, in the instructions in the MLS. <laughs> you submit your lowest and worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Instead of highest and best, you go lowest and worst, right? Or, or it clearly said, submit your proof of funds and you don't submit the proof of funds right? Or it said, submit your AVID or whatever they're asking for. And you just don't submit it, right? Um, that's the quickest way to, to leave a bad impression and piss off the listing agent to where they're not going to want to help you out and, and, and help push your offer through. Um, all right. Anything else, guys? I know we covered a lot. Um, this is really good. Anything else, Herbin or Blanca, that you think is allowing you to win in today's market in terms of how you submit your offers? And then Jay, what, what, what do you have to add? Yeah, I just wanted to add, guys, again, I think, you know, for a lot of the newer agents that are on this call um, right now, you know, we're, we're setting appointments. We're doing all this work to, to get the client. But this shows you kind of the back end of all those small things, the, the things that you're going to learn when you partner with a senior agent. So it's important to understand right now you're in one stage of your business, but it's going to quickly move on to where Blanca and Hervin are at. So it's important that we're doing all these small steps along the lines and, you know, getting mentored by, by agents like Herbin and Blanca. Yeah. And one, I guess one, one small nugget, um, I still need to get into the habit of doing this consistently, but look up the listing agent before you even like call them too. Because uh, if you look up their track record, it might kind of give you some it could work either way, but it might give you confidence too, um, uh, trying to negotiate with them. Because if you look at their track record and you see that they're consistently getting lowballed and they keep, keep that agent always takes those, it kind of gives you some more ammo and a little bit more confidence that where, where you could submit at. Um, I did that at Communication Hills for this, for this one listing agent. Um, and I noticed that he didn't really list too many properties. He was more on the buyer's agent side. So I came in a little bit more confidence of not even offering over ask. I came in right at asking and asked for credit. Um, and it worked out. And then um, some agents, they'll list the 1.5, 1.7, two million dollar property here, but they're from like the Valley. So they have a different style too. So you can come in with your good offer, but like fully contingent, they might even take it because they're used to that. So uh, um, just doing a little bit of homework on them before you submit an offer can help. And then what I used to do when I was getting started, which I should do again, is trying to look them up on Facebook or Instagram and seeing if you have any mutual friends. I used to name drop the shit out of Enrique. <laughs> <laughs> and it works, right? He's built a good track record, Blanca, Rob, um, so uh, do that too. Don't be afraid to name drop and hopefully they, they had a good experience with one of us. Like, oh, you hate Enrique too? Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that can help when you have a mutual friend. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, don't be afraid to name drop me, guys. It's all good. You can name drop me all day. Yeah. Uh, and not only that, name dropping our team, right? A lot of people know who PRG is, right? There's a reason you guys are all on our team. There's a reason we have over 500 five-star reviews and have sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes throughout the Bay Area. So a lot of people know who we are. I name drop Jason all the time, right? Uh, because a lot of people know him, not only from the business, but from wrestling and, and his family and stuff like that. So yeah. trust me, like those little things get your foot in the door, right? Like, oh, I'm part of PRG or uh, Enrique or whatever, or Jason or, or, or your senior agent. Use those things to your advantage. Just those small little things that are, are going to give you the advantage to, to win. Uh, uh, Blanca, anything else that you can add or any tidbits? 
No, I think uh, pretty much what Irvin is saying is is on point is, you know, just doing a little bit of research on the agent and most importantly is connecting, like, you know, finding a, a commonality, connecting with the agent, um, making them feel that you know what you're doing, you're professional, keeping the communication. And even if your client decides not to submit an offer, let's just say your client said, no, Blanca, we're going to pass, we're not going to submit. I always just call and say, hey, thank you so much for all the feedback. Thank you for giving me all that information. My client decided to pass. Hopefully, if you have another listing coming up. And guess what? When you say, hopefully you have another listing, they're like, actually, I do. What are they looking for? If you don't ask or if you don't call and just give that explanation, you'll never know. So um, that Los Altos uh, agent was like, Blanca, I have another one coming closer to downtown. What is the size that they're looking for? So always, even if they're not going to submit, you're going to probably run into this agent down the line. So just call and say, hey, thank you for all the information. Hopefully we can work together on another transaction. And then they'll let you know if they have anything else coming up or they'll remember you. Hey, they didn't submit, but they gave me a heads up that they weren't submitting. They didn't, they didn't leave me waiting for the offer. Yeah. So just always try to build that credibility, that professionalism, and that you know what you're doing. I love that advice, guys, is, is it goes back to a mindset of making friends or doing things for other people, regardless if there's an outcome, right? Regardless if it benefits you and not attaching yourself to the outcome, but just understanding that this business is all about relationships, right? You're not, if you plan to be a top agent in this, in this area, all the top agents know who each other, you know, they know each other. They've seen each other's names. They recognize each other. They all want to become friends with each other. So always come from a place of contribution. Always come from a place of how can I just build a relationship regardless of what the outcome is? Because mm -hmm. trust me, like how you made people feel during that interaction is what they're going to remember. Even if it's not on that transaction and you run into them again, oh yeah, I just remember Blanca was super cool the last time we talked, right? Or Herbin was super cool. Like he's always easy. Every time I've encountered him, we haven't done a deal together, but he's called me on a couple of properties. Always super cool. I'm rooting for that guy. I want to push the business that way, or I want to push my sellers in towards his way to accept his client's offer. You, you do not know how many times that has benefited me. You do not know me, how many times I've met with agents who don't decide to join our team or whatever it might be, but I still just help them out and coach them as if they were on our team. And that shit has paid me dividends like for years and years and years, whether they refer someone, whether they come back later, whatever it may be. It's just the mindset of just always come from a place of, of building that relationship, guys. And that's the key to winning in this business. It's all about the relationship. Um, I want to thank Herbin guys and Blanca. Let's give a round of applause for them. Uh, some valuable, valuable information, guys. These are things that they have learned over the years and the many, many transactions that they've been a part of. And trust me, you're not going to gain this stuff overnight. It takes practice. It takes repetition. Um, but these are golden nuggets that are helping them win in today's market and in any market, right? These apply to any market, but especially in today's market where it's becoming more challenging. Um, you got to be on your A game, guys. You got to step it up and you have to strive to say, hey, I want to do run my business like a Herbin, like a Blanca, like a top producer and become an elite agent, right? Have that mindset of I want to grow and I want to level up. Um, thank you guys so much. I know you guys are busy. Uh, you guys got to go sell up hundreds of more homes. But uh, and I know they're always willing to help. If you guys need something, reach out to them, text them, DM. I know they like coffee and they like lunch. <laughs> and stuff like that so hook them up and trust me guys they, they will help you out so thanks again guys hope you guys got some value today let me know if you need anything peace a good one guys peace thank you